It never stops, ladies and gentlemen. It never stops. Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you're doing well, mate. I really do hope that. Welcome back to Chelsea News. That's right, yet again. When Chelsea are in uncertain, turbulent times, news is going to keep regurgitating all over the gaff until there's certainty. And I feel like we are far away from certainty at the moment. Um, Chelsea look like they're not going to go for Luis Enrique, uh, which is really, really interesting. We're going to start a little bit of Matt Lord's article on that. And players taking big Champions League wage cuts. What's that going to do for morale? Intelligent for Chelsea Football Club in terms of not wasting money. But how are you going to develop the spirit and morale? There's lots to get into today. Again, if you're yet to watch my um, upload from earlier today, I'd urge you to go and watch it. It's obviously a few minutes out of your day and it keeps you posted. And if you want to keep up with the latest Chelsea news, there's no better place than this channel, Football Therapy. So consider subscribing and hitting the bell. And if you want to support the content, I'd welcome and urge you to drop a like. Are we going to transition? Yes, we are. Matt Law of The Telegraph writes this. Chelsea cut next manager shortlist with Luis Enrique. <clears throat> Enrique. Or Luis Enrique Martinez. I've got hair on the side of my mouth. Like a beard hair. But it's like... In like it's really... Anyway. Um, no longer among the favourites. So this is an exclusive from big Matt Law. Who we know is well informed with Chelsea. Chelsea have not placed Luis Enrique among the leading candidates for the permanent head coach job at the club. Uh, sorry, excuse me, as the club start to cut down their shortlist and prepare for a new round of talks. It will be so interesting and insightful to know who actually is on this list. Because, of course, there's the big, the big players that we know. But, you know, I, I was reading things like Vincent Company. Like, come on, like... You know, big respect to Vincent Company for what he's done in the championship with Burnley. Um, but, you know, it didn't work from Anderlecht. And this dude's just had one season in the championship. I'm sure he'd love to take the Chelsea job. Maybe he wouldn't. Maybe he thinks it's a poisoned um, thingy. Anyway, Enrique flew to London two weeks ago now for discussions with Chelsea. Of course, we spoke about that here on the channel. Him presenting and impressing with his dossier, covering every Chelsea player and how he would use them. Which sounds impressive. But it's a multi-billion pound thing. Of course, of course you're going to have that. Football's such like a... People reduce down football to such a simple thing because ultimately it is, you know, men kicking a ball. But ultimately, when, when there's that much money involved in an industry, of course there's going to be like due diligence and like, you know, intricate presentations and all that kind of... And those pitches, which you'd ruddy hope so. But saying that, with this ownership... <laughs> You're not sure. They're very much learning as they go. But they're, you know, they're still businessmen, so they'd expect know, to be really impressed by potential new managerial candidates. So he flew out a couple of weeks ago for these discussions, but there are no further talks currently planned with a, with a bar, former Barcelona man, which could leave the path clear for Tottenham Hotspur. So as things stand, Chelsea are not interested in continuing talks with Luis Enrique, and insiders from the club have said, yeah, like, this ain't gonna happen. Which will upset a lot of people because he has, he is that like, you know, 4 3 3 Barcelona tiki taka, very kind of like strong character, good, good philosophy, and uh, with like loads of attacking players. Chelsea fans wanted that essentially. A lot of them did. But I think there is a certain level of tactical inflexibility with Luis Enrique. And for all we know, there is good reason behind um, why they haven't uh, scheduled any more talks of him and they're looking elsewhere because um, cause they've been burnt, bro. They look like absolute knobbers, this Chelsea lot at the moment. So, they, you know, they talk about the exhaustive uh, process. They don't want to get it wrong again, you know. So Enrique is rated an outsider now, much like sporting, uh, Sporting's Ruben Amorin. So basically... It looks like neither of them will become the Chelsea coach, but you never know of Chelsea. Um, and the main contenders are Julian Nagelsmann and Maurizio Pochettino. Now, out of the two, I absolutely would want Julian Nagelsmann. Um, I just don't want Pochettino. Maybe I'd get proven wrong with him, but I just think he's a bit of a bit of a busted flush. Um, you know, he's 2016. He was trendy. He did bad at 
PSG in, as far as I'm concerned, you know. So Chelsea are expected to hold further talks with Nagelsmann, who was interviewed last week, and Pochettino with other coaches. Yeah, um, Pochettino was interviewed before, before we uh, hired Tuchel, I believe. Was it before we hired Potter? And take two goals. Sorry, I think it's, it's before we hired Potter, I think. Anyway, Nagelsmann is believed to impress Chelsea during his interview, which would have happened recently. But despite outside sources and some players believing he's the most likely permanent successor to Graham Potter, insiders have rejected the notion that the German is, emergency, is emerging as a favourite. That is really interesting, because now with this feeling with Luis Enrique not being considered, not being called back for another interview, um, you'd have to just think, well, Nagelsmann... It's got to be the favourite then, because, you know, he's... We know he's admired by the Chelsea hierarchy. He's fluent in English. He's very much a project manager. He's got the potential to be a project manager, and Chelsea very much is a project. And that's, like, the nicest thing you can call Chelsea right now. A project. So that'll be... So if he's... So I guess they just... Maybe that's just what an insider is saying. They don't want to give the game away, but... Maybe they've been really impressed with some alternatives. Maybe it is bloody Pochettino. Comment down below if you if you'd like Pochettino at Chelsea. Um, pff, I don't know. Not, not for me personally. So the former Tottenham manager Pochettino was interviewed by Chelsea and he impressed uh, Egbali and uh, Bowley in this year. This is before we appointed Potter. There you go. He is still available, having been out of work since been sacked by Paris Saint Germain. Um, yeah, really, really interesting. This. I want to stop there. Check out that uh, Matt Law article on the Telegraph. Uh, in a minute, we'll talk about this wage structure thing. But I just want to reflect and percolate a little bit on the Luis Enrique thing. It's not saying he will categorically not be the Chelsea manager. It's just basically this exclusive saying he's gone cold. Like as in like we not talking to anyone because we're going to try and look elsewhere. And Tottenham are looking at Luis Enrique. He knows he probably impressed Chelsea, but he maybe hasn't like completely convinced Chelsea. He might bowl up at Tottenham, do really well, and will look like mugs, and Chelsea will go upset. But ultimately, as much as it's sickening it is to try and digest and understand, I kind of get what the owners want in terms of something that marries up with a long-term vision. In the- It's all theory, isn't it? Like, you could say, oh, their long-term project vision is just naive, and, you know, if they want to win, they've got to do... Get the Lewis Enriquez of this world, but I can't, I do understand with their investment so far, largely it's been bad. No, no, not largely it's been pretty good actually with the youth and good players. Like we've got good players. That first summer, you could say, oh, we hindsight, we shouldn't have bought the players too cool wanted. You know, Sterling and Aubameyang or whatever, and um, I don't know. I think Kukurea probably was a club signing. But I can understand why they want to go for this kind of process project manager and how Nagel's man would fit that more so over Luis Enrique. So there's another big story emerging how Chelsea, basically, the players aren't going to earn that much because they haven't qualified for the Champions League. Now, this is a sort of structure in contracts we never used to have. It was always like just pay big to Chelsea um, I'm sure there was some sort of bonus-related uh, stuff, but I don't think we ever had that clause of if you don't qualify for the Champions League, <clears throat> you don't make any money. You don't make as much money because that's hard to allure players in. And Chelsea, like, generally always played in the Champions League, so they didn't need to put it in. It's just like a causing a negative idea, I think. Uh, so Sammy Mockbell on um, the Mail Online writes this: Chelsea's failure to qualify for next season's Champions League will cost players millions in wages as club is facing growing discontent with their squad um so this would this would upset everyone this won't upset the club so much because they'll be like whatever like we don't have to pay as much even though they'd prefer to be in the champions league but players will get paid less you know the blues elimination from this season's competition at the hands of madrid basically we won't be in the champions league next season and um that will uh, cost chelsea a lot of money but, you know, we were never really going to qualify for the Champions League, uh, even with a miracle against Real Madrid. Like, do we beat this current Manchester City? <sighs> I don't think so, bro. Following their arrival last year, Bowley and Clear Lake Capital have moved to implement a bonus structure to play contracts linked to Champions League qualification and would see their wages fluctuate depending on whether they are playing in the competition. Yes, yeah, so this is a significant change from the ownership of the Roman era, who only rewarded players for playing trophies. So you didn't 
you didn't like uh, punish essentially the players for not doing well. You rewarded them for doing well. It's positive reinforcement rather than punishment. But ultimately, this is positive reinforcement as well because not just taking away from the Champions League qualification thing. It was. It's also like, um, you know, bonus related contract. If you score a bunch of goals, you get more money. If you get loads of clean sheets, you get more money. If you would like the Roman era, if you win trophies and titles, you get more money. But if you don't qualify for the Champions League, you get less money. Male Sport understands that the club's most recent signings, or oh, those who have agreed to new contracts, will see their earning power slashed by at least, at least 30%. So it could be more than 30%. Now, deep that. Footballers make too much money, whatever. They're going to be rich, they're going to be fine, whatever. But imagine if you had 30% of taken off your wages and may, I'm guessing that's before tax as well um, or yeah, it would be before tax so you still get tax and whatever's left I don't know man that would still be a kick in the gonads they still probably have really expensive um, outgoings and projects and stuff they pay for so uh, sources have indicated that some contracts have also been discussed uh, which have included a potential wage increase as high as 50% uh, links to Chelsea being the Champions League. That ha again, half your wages, half your freaking wages, dude. So how is this going to affect morale when you're like earning way less money? Maybe you could have signed elsewhere on a sh short deal for more money, and maybe they some players like the long term deal security. Maybe some don't. But that is a profound difference in wage, dude. It is unclear whether the variable wage scheme will be enforced immediately or the players will be given a grace period. I'm, I mean, it's stern, stern, but fair. The real question is, do these players right now deserve a grace period? I'll put that question to you, my friends. The decision to enforce the uh, incentivized salary structure was designed to motivate the players, but it also provides Chelsea with a degree of protection against the financial shortfall incurred by failure to qualify for the hugely lucrative Champions League. Yeah, like I said before, when these guys first came in, I really like the idea of incentivized wage structure. It's what Harry, I always use this example, but it's what Harry Kane's been on at Tottenham for ages. He does earn about 200k a week, but that's largely because he um, scores loads of goals and just always performs. He's always got high value, higher output. So, you know, it's very, very uh, good way to structure, I believe, your contracts. In contrast, however, those who have signed during the Abramovich era will be continued to be paid in full. Their contracts will be honoured. Chelsea have signed 12 senior players on a permanent uh, contract since Bowley Clear Lake Takeover, while seven existing squad members have signed fresh terms, which, of course, would, you'd imagine have the, the new uh, Bowley, Egbali Clear Lake uh, structure to it on the new deals. Moving forward, the club faced the task of convincing a group of players who have grown increasingly unhappy at Chelsea in recent weeks about the direction they are headed. <laughs> also, they're, le they're earning less money. <laughs> so, hey guys, I know things are terrible right now. We've got no manager and you're all playing badly. It's up to us to turn that frown upside down and lift the mood. Oh yeah, you're getting 50% pay cut. And, um, you know, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I just drop that one in like, you know, there's a chance you want to get pay paid anymore. But whatever, man, I'm, to be honest, I'm like totally for it. I absolutely endorse incentivized pay structures. Look, man, you want to, earn, you earn silly money anyway. You want to earn the real peas, earn it. Score a goal, bust a gut. I don't know what Chelsea's going to look like in the future. It's interesting to hear about the money uh, situation, the fact that no Luis Enrique it does look like... To me, like, I've just got this gut feeling that it will be um, uh, Julian Nagelsmann. I think maybe it's a bit... It's, he's, yeah, I don't know. I'm not totally convinced by him. I don't know how he's going to command the dressing room. I do think he's a bit of a dweeb, but that could be quite a cool thing. <laughs> I don't know, man. A little bit worried. He doesn't scream Chelsea manager to me. But the same way Graham Potter didn't, and I was quite positive about that. But then again, look how that turned out. You know? I put it out to you guys. Let me know what you think about everything I've spoken about in today's video. I love going through the comments, so I thank you for engaging on the content. And I welcome you to like and subscribe to my channel, Football Therapy. Keep it locked, guys. Ciao.